guys, welcome back to another episode of Sleeping Giants Red Star Belgrade. Now, in the last episode, we wrapped up the league title and that was bloody brilliant. And it just sort of gives us a nice little bit of a nice way to finish off the season. We've had a couple of dodgy defeats lately. The one against Partizan, of course, the one against Voivodina. Um, but, you know, we've been pretty decent. So what I said is that I was going to play our, I play a very rotated side. So lots of the youth players to see if we could do the, see how well we do in the last few games of the season, just playing some youngsters, basically. And I think we've done pretty fucking well. I got to tell you. Uh, also, the most important thing I think we need to discuss in this episode, I not even really need to discuss, is to tell you, is the fact that we've been given some money. And those of you who follow me on Twitter will have already seen how much we got because I did uh, when I saw it, feel the need to tweet about it just because it was surprising. Now, I think in the last episode, I said that as long as it was around three or four million pounds, I would be happy. Well, I'm fucking ecstatic because we've just been given 9.5 million pounds transfer fund for the summer. We only actually got 1.2 million in terms of uh, Champions League television revenue. So that was a little bit strange. Um, I was told it was going to be bigger than that. Not too bothered still because we got lots of money. Earned ourselves two million from those draws as well. So there's that also. Um, I don't know if it's going to be as... It might well not be quite as easy next year, though. That's my worry. Because as much as we did well this year, we got a pretty favourable draw in the group and some pretty favourable matches to try and get in there. What I really hope is that after a few years of decent success in the Champions League, <coughs> they'll find a cure for me sneezing on fucking live... Oh, Jesus Christ, sorry about that, guys. There's nothing I can do about that. Um... My hope is that after a few years of some decent success, our coefficient will improve and we'll get put in at later and later rounds. So we won't have quite so many games in the preseason because we still have to go through qu three qualifying rounds to get to the group stages. And my worry is that that could all go horribly wrong. and We could get drawn against a really good side and get knocked out next season. And I cannot afford for that to happen. So I'm going to be looking extensively to get some players. I've got my scouts going out. Uh, I'm trying something new when it comes to scouting, which I'm just going to show you now. I've only just started doing it, so we've not had any results from it just yet. Because um, a few people have been asking on both videos how I find players, and I have explained this before. I did a video where I literally talked about it, so I'm not going to do that again. If you want to um, find that, you have to look back a few videos on my Pompey series. But basically, what I normally do is I have them sent to specific countries looking for um players in fact uh, let's just see yeah so basically what i usually have it set to is uh country what well, not country that's not a country the country is here like normally pick a country with a decent national team i go for current ability is not relevant for me right now because i'm looking for players that are going to be good and i have the potential ability set at five stars here because obviously red star uh our squad probably isn't as good as my pompey team and therefore it makes sense that we could look for slightly you know better potential players between the ages of 15 and 19 generally that means mostly regions but of course because we're only in the third season of the game very soon that's going to be potentially some real players in there so that's what i'm gonna do now sometimes i leave the transfer budget on automatic sometimes I, I actually suggest it because it depends on where you are in the season like if you know what your transfer budget is going to be for the next year then you can sometimes get away with leaving it on automatic but with pompey generally because we ha i have to start scouting earlier i have it set to about well i have it now set to about 15 million um yeah and basically that's just what i've been doing but now lately i've tried to do something a little bit different and that is this to actually scout regions instead of individual countries so for example look we've got a guy here who's currently in qatar we've got one in brazil scotland denmark and germany at the moment now i've got uh, people scouting the current league because I feel that we could still get some talent out of this league from the other clubs so I've got that we've got a player scouting a new guy that I've managed to bring in I'm not entirely sure on him yet um, we have bought him that's much is is sure but usually what I do is if there's a guy I'm really really excited about I will try and sign him, and this one I have tried and signed. I was confident enough in him before I put the bid in, of course, but then I'll send a scout out to look at them for an extended period of time, so maybe two or three months if I'm really not entirely sure. But we're getting this guy. This guy has actually signed. He's not joining us just yet. This is Georgios uh, Castanas. Same kind of deal as I had with uh, Georgi Pilia, uh, the Georgian kid, but this guy is from Cyprus. He plays for um, Anorthosis Famagusta. We're not entirely sure on his stats yet, but it's that potential kind of thing that I'm more sort of excited about we know some things about it we're only sort of 51 percent on his scouting so mm, i'm a little bit unsure but the point is it, it is a done deal but that was fine because i'd already wrapped this one up so yeah when i free up another scout when i'm done with him i'll send another one out but we've got scouts currently doing uk and ireland uh middle east central europe scandinavia and south america now on my pompey save i've got more scouts i've got 11 or 10 i think so i've got more regions that i can do scouting for um as you can see, we've not got any reports just yet, but that's because they've not returned their first reports. Also, because I have less leagues loaded into the database on this one, just to make it a bit faster, we haven't, you know, you're, you're going to find less players. However, 
when the new computer arrives on Thursday, when I start making videos using that, the first chance I get, so when a new season comes around, I'm going to add in a load more leagues because the computer will be able to handle it. It'll probably still be faster than it is now with one league. And that will give us more chances to find some decent young region and all that kind of stuff. So basically, that is what I do for scouting. Um, when players come back, I'll look at the reports. If there's any that interest me, I will scout them further using situations like this. Uh, I give it a, usually a month. Then if I, I take a risk on them and that, that's basically how I do it. And you just got to use your initiative. Look at the stats. Don't always look at the stars specifically because sometimes they can lie. Um, just look at the stats, you know, sort of look at things like important things to try and find out those, whether they're injury prone, big game players, selfish, consistent, all this kind of stuff is very important too, because it's all about having a player that might have a lot of potential, but if he's got all those stats, he's never going to reach that potential. So important things. So those of you that are wondering, that is what I do basically, um, I've only just I've just turned off all my previous sets of scouting to put this new test because I, what I was doing initially was one country, but now I've decided to do it for regions because that way when they're done with one country, they'll move to the next. If it doesn't work out, I'll go back to doing what I was doing before. Um, yeah, I might talk a little bit about this in Pompey later, but I thought I'd do it in this one since I have. I, I may have to actually because not everyone watches this safe. So let's actually get into what's happened this month because that's what we're here for, isn't it? Right, so in the first game, oh, game, yeah, game of the month, we played against Proletaire Novi Sad and... I did a sort of, I did a full squad rotation, basically, um, using the quick pick thing just to see who he suggested. I was going to try and put two Fedzic in, but he's on international duty with the under-21s at the moment, so he was unable to play. But they took the lead for Ivan uh, Saponic from a penalty. Uh, I mean, it happened. It was very strange because I was looking up the other end of the pitch by the time they gave the penalty because the ball was nowhere near it. One of those ones where it must have been a push, I guess. But they scored it. Uh, but then Bogan Rangilov, our young striker who was playing up front for us and started this game and played 81 minutes, although we did have to go off with a late injury, scored a great equalizer with us. Ball was knocked in by, I think it was Lazovic. He took a touch, took it around the defender and smashed it in the top corner. It was a great goal. And more of that, please, from him. Then in the second half, things got a little bit more cushy uh, for us. Um, not quite hushy cushy who was not featuring in this game. Um... But still quite decent when Darko Lazovic, who for me has to win player of the season. Uh, man of the match again in this one. Got a nine rating again with a goal and an assist. At least one assist, I think. Made it 2-1 to us. And then things just got even better for us. There's more youngsters coming off the bench. Uh, Avramovsky picked up an ox, so I brought on uh, Matajevic. Scored a great... Well, actually, Bosancic had a great goal. Bounced back off the crossbar. Matajevic was there where he should be to put the ball in the back of the net for his first goal. And then Darko Lazovic. Actually, yeah, he set up another goal because he set up Milos Zukanovic for his goal in 88 minutes. So that means a relatively young side, like featuring some of our real potential players like Nikola Jakic and, well, frankly, most of the team, um, managed to beat, you know, a quite a poor side, I have to say. 4-1 at home, and that was good to see. We were really, really dominant. We just... Didn't create that many clear-cut chances, but we didn't need to. We won the game solidly. Uh, 31 shots. I mean, it, it was a domination job. In the next game, I, of course, did an even further squad rotation. So that actually meant we were playing an even weaker side. And we were playing away at third place, Radnicki. And I don't know how we did this, but we actually won 3-0 away from home at the team that's current, well, was currently third in the league with a ridiculously weak inside. I mean, look, Jack Zidge again. He had Jovanovic fine, but Marinkovic, Djordovic... Uh, Iz you know, Izakovic, Ivanovic, Gavric, fine, Zukanovic up front. So a lot of youngsters in this team. Uh, of course, it was the more experienced players that got the goals for us, generally. Uh, Alexander Kavashevich put us in front when, uh, I think it was M Bosancic's header, deflected back off the crossbar, straight into his path, and he's put it into the net. Then, from another corner, Bosancic this time did score with a header, just to cap off the season in style for himself, before a late goal from Nemanja Ivanovic. Wonderful cross from... Oh, Christ, who was it? Uh, I can't actually remember who put the cross. I think it was one of our subs. Uh, maybe not. I actually can't remember who, the, who put the cross in, but... Oh, it was Gavridge. It was a great cross and a great goal. Jovanovic was man of the match, though. And we were a bit lucky in this one because they had actually created some decent chances, as you can see, but we just put them in the net. We have been clinical. So, yeah, basically all of that leaves us on 70 points, which is, I believe, six more than we had last season when we won the league. So definitely a, an improvement. And you'll see that we're actually now ended up with 13 points clear of Partizan, and that is with us losing to them in that game. We've scored 87 goals in the league this season, and a massive improvement. Not top scorers or anything, but you look at Darko Lazovic, he's been so, so good. And uh, Nena Gavric has been pretty damn good as well. I'm hoping that Lazovic wins player of the season. To me, with those kind of 
average ratings and his consistency and goal scoring and creativity there's no way he can't win it also note that Voivodina have managed to finish or are going to finish quite high up the league here but despite having a minus 19 goal difference which is absolutely shocking they've conceded the joint most goals in the league um so there you go Borac are as good as down for me also um someone asked me this also yeah, not also. Someone asked me this, basically. Um, how are Metal Atch doing? Well, if this is the Metal Atch you're talking about, which I assume it is, Ewan, um, if that is how I pronounce your name. Also, by the way, Ewan, the reason I can't respond I can't respond to your comments, um, Google won't let me. You've something with your Google Plus settings means I can't respond, and it's annoying because you actually have posted some really funny things and good comments that I wish I could reply to, but I can't. But I'm replying to you now. Um, yeah, they're actually in the playoffs. In the, uh, They're probably going to be playing against, well... OFK maybe so they could actually be joining us in the top flight next season Radnicki are back up along with a new club uh, well not a new club but a new club to the save uh, which is um, let me just see if I, I need to see it a little bit closer I'm still playing this on my laptop with this a bit further away FK uh, Bezanji, Bezanija Bezanija I don't know uh, if that's right then let me know if not then sorry also Jesus they've had a pretty piss poor season anyway I'll just quickly show you the squad for this month Top goal scorer, of course, still for us, is Milos Bosancic. He's been so consistent. Look at the amount of appearances he's got compared to everyone else. 42. He's played more. I mean, even our goalkeeper has not played as many, and he's not played that many at all. But he's been the most consistent. I think he's played every game for us, Bosancic. I have to think that he probably has. And he's our top goal scorer with 19 goals. That is bloody superb. Someone asked me on Twitter whether we're going to look for experienced players with the money or youth prospects and of course i'm not looking for youth prospects per se but i am going to look for players that are going to grow with this club that isn't to say that if there was a good player that's sort of 27 28 and is excellent because we've got a lot more wage budget now that i won't bring him in because you go and you bet your bottom dollar i will if i can find someone that's right for us and is older which i will be looking for as well but i'll be looking for those myself using just what we've got scouted already um and i might have one of my other scouts just look for those sort of players too then it could work out quite nicely for us. But yeah, I will still be looking for younger players just because I want them to grow with the save. And I feel that if we can get a couple in that are going to sell for huge money later on, that can help us improve this club's infrastructure as well. If we can improve our youth intakes even further, that that's the way I think we're going to do this because I, I think we've got to grow slowly. We can't jump too far into it because if we spend a load of money on big wages players, which older players will obviously demand more wages, and then we don't get into the Champions League group stage again this year or something we could end up in a financial black hole and that's the last thing we need because then we'd have to go and recuperate those money by not selling those players but by selling the younger players and it, i just being very very careful with everything we do basically uh, top assists is lazovic with 15 but gavrich has 14 avramovsky 13 savicevic and peshnik of course uh, have 10 Pl player of the match lazovic avramovsky and savicevic have five apiece pass rating hushti Oh, yes. Still right up there. Yellow cards, it's Kovacevic and... Uh, wait. I've got my filters turned on, but you you know, you know what I mean. Um, I had that just so I was looking for uh, Tufedzic when I was trying to find him. Um, average rating, of course, is Savicevic still, but Lazovic is not that far behind still. So let's get into the match preview and see what rotated team um, my assistant thinks will be a good one for today's game. So Kovacevic is suspended, so he won't be playing. We're going to do a full rotation, see who comes up this time. So... Oh, Tufedzic is back. Back from international duty, and that's good because I really have been wanting to play him. So we're going to go with the team Zukanovic again up front. Tufedzic this time. Lazovic, Gavric, Basancic, of course. Gojic, Jovanovic. The two Jovanovic's. Don't know if they're related. Probably not. Uh, Georgievic and Jaksic. And, of course, Stankovic in goal. And, of course, uh, we've got, you know, we've got Savicevic on the bench just in case. But I'm really kind of curious to see what Tufedzic can do. Because, for me, he is one of the the star players of the future for us. So that shadow striker, let's just see what he needs to improve specifically for that role. His anticipation could do with being a bit higher. Strength needs to go, but he's still very young. Uh, determination, hmm, yeah. Long shots, a bit better. Finishing is a bit low. So he's not great for that. I mean, but he does have some, I mean, passing is phenomenal. 17 passing at the age of 17. That is great. Uh, leadership too. Maybe a future captain. Who knows? Anyway, let's see. I think this might be his first game for us I don't know if I've played him or not this might well be his fight he does have a squad number though but that might not mean anything let's just have a look see if this is his first game for us but I have been wanting to try this sort of thing out and today is going to be the perfect opportunity I do feel like our tactic 
has been improving, but I still want your guys' opinions on the European tactic and one that we can use maybe with two strikers to just batter this league into submission. And two Fedzic. No, he has played once and two substitute appearances. Okay, so he's, yeah, <laughs> not a debut by any stretch, but he has also got an assist for himself. So maybe he can get his first goal for us today. Who knows? Let's get into this. We are at home against Donzis Rem, so I'm hoping that we can come up with a big win here or just a win, frankly, to finish off the season with the youngsters doing their uh, more experienced players proud today. Obviously, there's a few of them still on board, like Bosancic, um, who is just, he's already becoming a club legend for me in this save. The amount of goals he's managed to contribute this season have been unbelievable. If he could do the same thing next year, you know he's the joint top scorer in the Champions League. Um, like, it, the Champions League is now finished, and Real Madrid won it, in case you're interested. But he got eight goals in the Champions League, the same amount as carrying Benzema. If Benzema hadn't scored in the final, he would have won um, the like golden boot for the Champions League this year. He also, I know I'm talking about this because nothing's happening in the game, um, which I might try and just uh, stir up myself here, just by hitting some earlier crosses here. He also won goal of the tournament for that strike against Benfica, the one that went in off the crossbar to make it 3-0. Um, so... A thoroughly good season for him. Brilliant thing is when I spoke to him about the goal, he um, <laughs> he was like, oh, I've scored better. And we know you have because we've seen that one that you scored in real life. I can't believe nothing's happened in this first half. We've been poor. Uh, right, we need to do something about this. I'm sorry, guys. This has been a really woeful game. We're going to go to control because nothing's happening. Although, it, mm, no, actually, I might not go on control. We want to try and make something happen by going on control. We're actually, that's probably better for, oh, wait, 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 not overload. Right, what can we change? Hmm. I'm going to close down a little bit more. I'm going to turn off hit early crosses because I don't really think that's going to work. We're going to try and keep a little bit more of the ball. Maybe losing it. If we can keep it a little bit more, we might have a bit more of a chance. How are we doing for possession? Yeah, okay, we need to get a bit more of the ball. Um, what a woeful first half. Not a single highlight worth talking about. That is um, pretty disappointing considering how exciting some of these fixtures have been. I'm really hoping that in a few years' time we might be able to do like ridiculous little challenges for ourselves, things like going a season unbeaten in the league or winning every game, because if we get to the point where we're having to challenge for the Champions League, hopefully at one point, then you'd have to say that we're probably good enough to win every game in this league. And oh, first actual chance of the game goes for Donji Srem there. We need to step it up a notch. Not that they have either, but we definitely do need to. I'm guessing it's probably because we're playing a weakened team, but even so, I'd like to see a little bit more from us. We do need to close him down. Hmm... I can't believe I've only had two shots, neither of which have actually even been on target. There we go, three shots, lovely stuff. Right, let's get a substitution made, because... Ooh. Hmm. I'm going to bring on Marco Mahal... Oh, wait, no, I'm not. No, I'm going to bring on Stankovic for Nikola Jovanovic, because he's not been playing that great, and he's on a booking. That's going to be our first substitution of the game. Might look to change things a little bit. Maybe just throw it on overload just to see what happens. Maybe bring on Savicevic because Tufedzic has not had a good game so far. I'm thinking maybe... Right. On comes Vukan. What have you got for me, Vuks? Sorry, Lubisa, but you've not had a best game. Um, oh, right, okay. Overload. I would like to win this game, so we're just going to throw caution to the wind here. It doesn't really matter if we don't win it, but let's give it a little crack. Um, time to push forward. Last few minutes of this game. It's been a pretty turgid affair as far as live comms go. Oh, Lazovic now. Ball back to Vukan Savicevic. Surely he can't make an instant sub instant impact. Not quite there. Don't know if that counts as the chance or not. Ball cleared. Oh, oh, it's Tufedzic. They've got their own Tufedzic. Or have they just stolen ours? Is that what's happened? We're so much better than that we've had to give them one of our players. Do you remember doing that when you play football back at school? No, no, it's just because I was always the one. Yeah. <laughs> I was always on the team that had to have the extra player, if that gives you any idea about my fully footballing pedigree. Zukanovic now. Gavrich. Ball all the way across, and it's cleared away, and still nothing really... There we go. We're getting a bit more pushed higher up here. Gojic now. Stankovic. Gojic. Get it out wide. Thank you. Georgievic now on the left-hand side to Gavrich. Can he get it into the centre, or will he just shoot from long range? Please don't shoot from... Oh, Lazovic at the far post. Savicevic. Savicevic. And Vukan Savicevic has been on the pitch a matter of minutes and he's already made it 1-0 to us what a player he is seriously he makes a hell of a difference when he plays in that role if we can have him fit next season for the full year and you think Avramovsky's done well because frankly he has done exceptionally well but that Bukhan Savicevic is such a player 
Uh, and he's much, much younger as well. Well, no, he's not. He, it's just a touch and the finish. That's his 10th goal of the season, and he's only played about 10 games for us this year, I think. He's got about 10 assists as well, if I remember. He's just a goal and assist machine. Bosancic is quite far forward here. Cleared away, and Gojic will bring that down. I am leaving it on overload because I want to see if we can get a couple more on the rest of this game, because why the hell not? Bosancic. Oh, it's cleared. It doesn't even matter that even though they've won the ball back here, they've just committed nobody forward, which is really bizarre. Right, now they're starting to creep forward, but they've just lost it. Oh, ball played through here. Zukanovic is on side, and he surely has to score here. Zukanovic. Oh, he's missed it. That's a really poor effort. One-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. I know the defender's bearing down on you, mate, but you've got to do better than that. And I can't be asked to switch it back off of overload. We may as well just leave it. Even if we do end up drawing this game, it's just... Uh, Nope, it looks like we are going to win it, just the 1-0, but who else could be the hero but Vukan Savicevic? Ball in from Jaksic, Zukanovic, and it's cleared back to Savicevic. Bosancic, oh, I thought he was going to have a, a volley from the edge of the area or something. There we go. Shravenovez, uh, the 1, FK Donjeshrem, nil. And that, well, I can't think of anything. We've won the title and we've just finished off with a lovely old win. What more do you want? 73 points in the league, 13 points clear of FK Partizan, and 26 points clear of third place. That's a pretty damn good... I don't know. If someone knows uh, a Serbian, potentially, or someone that follows Serbian football, if you know um, the biggest like winning margins or most points or records like that in Serbia, um, Serbian football, could you let me know? Because I'm kind of curious about that. Um, I know that we've got... with uh, I think it was Mata Matajevic in the other game scoring. That was the youngest player that we'd ever had score for us because he was only 15. Um, so there we go. But if you know that stuff, then please let me know because for some reason it doesn't seem to be built into the game, I don't think. Records... Um, well, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Modern day. Yeah, okay. Mo okay, so maybe there are some records in here, which apparently we've somehow managed to not break. Most points. Are you kidding me? How did they get 105 points? That's impossible. How did they get 105 points? Is that even... The most points you could get is 90. Oh, we're not going to break that record unless they start giving us extra points. I'm assuming that the Serbian League used to have more teams in it because we're not going to be able to beat that. But I'll tell you what, goals, you never know. You never know. We might get that. Uh, we're not going to break that record. Most games without winning. Wow, they went an entire season. Jesus. Most games without losing. I just want to break one of these records, you know. One in a row. Wow. Oh, wait, we did. That was our record. That must. No, it wasn't, was it? <laughs> anyway, sorry about that, guys. Um, I was just kind of curious about things. So, um, join us in the next episode where I'll be going over our summer transfers. Um, but you'll probably join us quite early on, so we'll probably still have quite a few transfers left to go because we'll be well, around about June, no, ju middle of July kind of time for the first game in the Champions League. Hopefully, it's against someone of the similar kind of caliber as KR because um, we'll be better and they'll hopefully be worse. So, yeah, uh, if you like what you've seen, and you like us winning the title, please feel free to drop a like on the episode. And if you'd like to even more than that, please feel free to subscribe to my channel for more Portsmouth and Red Star Bell Red in your inbox every single day at 5.30 and 8 o'clock. And I will see you guys in the next episode for our first Champions League game. And I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.